Perkins and I'm the instructor for this Math 13 class. And what we're doing here is the overview for Chapter 1. So each chapter will have an overview much like this where I have uh, made up some example problems. These aren't going to be full lectures or anything, but just covering example problems that cover the main ideas of each chapter. Then I'll produce a video like this where I go over the solutions. Most of the time you won't actually see me talking. Uh, for this chapter, the solutions I can pretty much just say it so I can talk like an anchorman at the camera right now. But usually I'll point the camera down towards the page and you'll see me work out the, the problems and use the calculator and such. Well anyway, here we go with uh, chapter one overview. Number one was a man runs a 100 meter race in 11.1 seconds. Part A, is the 100 meter considered discrete or continuous data? So discrete really, excuse me, discrete um, is basically talking about things that are countable. For example, how many children a person has, um, how many animals they have, how many automobiles they own. So those are things that you can count. Uh, continuous data would be things that are measurements, like time and distance and uh, height, things like that. So since this one is 100 meters, it's measuring a distance, then that is continuous data. On to part B, name the level of measurement. So with having 11.1 seconds, then this is going to be ratio level of me measurement because you can take time, 10 seconds, 11 seconds, etc. You can subtract them, you can put them in order, but with with ratio, there's also the requirement that there is a natural zero or a starting point. And this would be before the race started, t equals zero before they started the clock. And so that would be the natural starting point. So it's going to be ratio. Next, there's this group of people divided into groups by their hair color. Next, 15 people are chosen from each group. Well, when you divide people into groups, there's basically two of the um, types of sampling methods that that could be. Stratified and cluster both do that. But cluster would then go and choose one group, let's say the people with black hair, and it would interview all of those people with black hair. The stratified, on the other hand, would choose a few from each group, which is what this is doing. So this is stratified. So number three, on a standardized test for 10th graders in the US, one math question starts by saying, Quote, the local police have asked for your help to solve a crime. So what's a problem with this? So this just comes under the general critical thinking about statistics. So if this was on a questionnaire or a test, um, using the idea that it's the local police, a lot of different people can have a lot of different reactions just with that phrase. There can be people that feel completely comfortable with the police, others that have bad experiences with the police and perhaps fear the police. And so unless there, uh, it was absolutely necessary to be talking about the police, they really shouldn't bring it up, especially if it's a 10th grade math question. So in general, what's wrong, number four, what's wrong with allowing people to select themselves to be a part of a study? For example, in the Monterey Herald on the front page, they will say, oh yeah, read this article and then what's your opinion? Do you feel yes or no? And basically the only type of people that are going to take the time to go online or wherever it is they need to respond are those people with very strong opinions. The average person that sort of feels one way or the other about it, you're not gonna get their opinion if they're self-selective because they don't feel strong enough about it. So next up, number six. A study says that 6.0% of 105 people admitted to shoplifting. What's wrong with that situation? So again, here, just some critical thinking. If you take 6%, not only that, it says 6.0%, so it's trying to say this is a very accurate number. So if you take 6% of 105, so multiply 0 0.06 by 105, you'll end up with the number 6.3. So how is it possible that 6.3 people said that they shoplifted? Again, this is a discrete situation. It's either six people shoplifted or seven people shoplifted. There's no way that it's 6.3. Now, if this would have said 
there would have been some kind of decimals, 6.1%, 6.108%, something like that, where the number of people turned out to be, let's say, 6.012 or something like that, which is very close to 6, I would say, well, that's just rounding error. But this, this is not just rounding error because this is 6.3 people. The 0.3, that's way too much error. And finally, for number six, so one statement is, too little money is being spent on welfare. The other one is, too little money is being spent on helping the poor. So which statement do you think would get more support, or which one basically calls to your attention? And for me, it's the second one, because when you say something about and it's not really, I'm not going to take a political look one way or the other, but if you say something about money being spent to help people, then usually people would respond positively to that because most people uh, would like to help other people, especially if it's helping the poor. So that's about it for the chapter one overview. Uh, some of the other chapters are going to be much longer. The overviews will take a lot more time. We'll need to do some formulas and some actual math. This one was mostly explanations. So until next time.